Here we're looking at a uh, brand new Nimbus T11 with twin 300 Mercs. Uh, this boat has a 12 volt, um, 12,000 BTU unit with 10 hours of runtime at at, uh, at worst case scenario at, with the with the unit running at full speed. So taking a look here, when you reconfigure the seat, you're able to open this compartment here. This is where the existing electronics were. So we matched this system and put everything so you have a single location where everything's gonna be. We added in this sterling power. So this is the shore power battery charger. Then we have these two DC to DC chargers, which are connected to the, uh, to the engine batteries to charge the lithium bank. So under here, We have two 250 amp hour lithium batteries. We relocated the existing batteries that were in this casing over here to this side. So here what we're talking about is when we're on shore power, we have this one running. When the engines are running, we have these two. Each one of these is capable of 60 amps. Um, input, so even saying that we get 50 amps out of each one, um, we'd still be able to charge at 100 amps. The unit draw at full speed. Um, worst case scenario that we'll be able to see is gonna be um, about 40 amps, 40, uh, or it's 44 amps, so uh, we still ha we'll, we'd be able to maintain the unit running, um, as well as be able to put charge back into the batteries when the engines are running. Uh, we'll be able to maintain the consumption of the unit running any time over about 700, 750 RPMs. Over here we have the uh, the shunt for the uh, for the Victron uh, BMV 712, which is giving us Bluetooth functionality to be able to view what's happening with the uh, with the batteries. When we're starting up the unit, this is where our seawater discharges. The through hole next to it is for the uh, for the condensation pump. So when we're running the unit, we want to make sure we have a good flow of water coming out of the side uh, to let us know that the strainer is clean, that we don't have any obstructions, or that the unit doesn't need doesn't require any cleaning. Right now, we are connected to shore power. One discharge vent over here, so this is taking care of the whole, we'll say the main cabin area. We have a vent for the head, so we can close this vent if needed, open it up, it can be turned. In this case, I'll just leave it open. Aft cabin is where we have the uh, the unit located, where we have the unit located as well as the pump installation. So just under this couch here, or just, I'm sorry, just under this cushion, this floor comes up. Here we have our pump setup. So through hole, valve is open, so valve as well. Strainer, we have our pump. And then after our pump, we have our bleeding system, which would simply require turning this valve, getting any air out that could be in the system, closing it back up again once the air is out. That way if the boat comes in and out or when you're cleaning the strainer, if you just introduce air into the system, it's very easy to purge that air out of the system. We have a fuse for the pump right over here. So it's just see what I'm doing here but just pop that out fuse comes out it's a 5 amp ATC fuse so if the pump's not running it could be that then further back into this aft cabin
have our 12 volts, uh, 12,000 BTU unit located right over here. Control box. Here's our junction box where we're doing the connections. And right over here, we have the, the breaker. So that's also uh, the, the amperage protection. So if the units ever drawing more than it's supposed to, maybe the pump's running dry, unit's trying to run, um, it is possible to trip that breaker. Um, but also if the boats can be in storage for a long period of time, not connected to shore power, it's recommended. All you have to do is push this red button here. There's a little yellow foot that comes out and that will cut the power to the electrical box. So the reason why we say that is because even though the control panel in the cabin, even if that's off, uh, this box will still draw power. Then back over here, we added a separate box uh, off to the left over there. That's the breaker for the separate battery charge that we added in. So right next to the existing panel of the boat, which is that one right there where you see the red light. The unit is reverse cycle, so it is a, it's a heat pump, so we do cooling and heating. If we come over here, we can see our digital display. So we want a lower temperature, raise temperature, control fan, you just tap this, so we're in auto now. So if I tap it, we're now in low speed. I usually just leave it in auto. If you want to switch from cooling to heating, we just hit mode. So snowflake cooling, we have a sun in red signifies heating, signifies heating. And then we have just a green fan that signifies that we just want fan only, the fan will come on. Um, it would just be the fan running, there wouldn't be a compressor coming on. If you have any alarms, you'll have this that starts flashing. Um, it'll give you a code and a little description of what it is. We don't have any alarms, so it's not going to show anything, but the common is going to be an error 8 or an error 10. Um, error 8 is going to be a high pressure alarm. Um, error 10 is going to be a, uh, a um, um, condensing coil over temp, cooling water protection. And so that those two alarms signify that we don't have enough water flow if we're in cooling mode um, or if we're in heating mode uh, it could also signify the same thing just because we don't have enough so it's just opposite ends of the spectrum but you wouldn't have the air 8 you would but you would see the uh, the air 10 then we have our Victron display over here so this is monitoring the uh, so here we're viewing the lithium batteries they're 14.9 volts Aux battery is going to be the house battery. House battery is at 14.34. So these are the existing, this is the existing system of the boat. Then we're going to our amperage. So we're not discharging the batteries. We're not charging the batteries. We're just maintaining them. We've consumed zero amp hours. Batteries are hundred percent. And this is also Bluetooth. So it's just a matter of downloading the Victron Energy, the Victron Connect app. And you can view this on a remote device. We didn't talk about the vents in this back cabin, which is right over there. So off this unit, we're splitting off into three ducts, one four inch and then two three inch vents. So I'm back in the aft cabin. This is the sound with the, with the partition closed. So the unit's right behind this wall here. Turn. You see it right behind over there. Right over here we have our sensor. So this is the temp sensor where we're reading the, the temperature of the cabin right now. Which looking is showing us 76 degrees. Then through the menu. See that our compressors on our pumps on, what our return temperature is, evaporate temperature is down to 50. 
our condenser's at 89. Temperature, we can select between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And then we can also adjust the brightness of the display. We just leave out full brightness. And then this is just gonna be the time before it goes into dim mode. Last thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna get into this aft compartment where the uh, where the main breaker is located. Actually, hang on, I think it's behind this panel, so I'm gonna take this panel off and then film again. So if we look in here in this aft compartment, this is the main breaker from the shore power. So it's directly behind this panel, so if there's ever a situation where the shore power is connected, there's no power getting to anything, it is very possible that this breaker is stripped. So I'm gonna turn this off to disconnect shore power entirely. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna check our Victron now. Our batteries are fully charged. So we'll get a good idea of what our runtime is going to be. And that is not using 100% of the battery, that is using only 85%. We have the, uh, we have the, uh, the cutoff set up at uh, leaving a 15% capacity in the batteries. That way we're not fully discharging them. see our voltage is now dropping because we don't have the chargers connected anymore. I guess the DC DCs are still activated so we'll give it a second to equalize. So right now we're drawing 36.6, 36.7, so 36 amps. We're gonna let this think a little bit, get back to an accurate number because it slowly, is, it's gonna slowly do it so it's not jumping all over the place. So we have to let it think a little bit. Just to show over here, we start having a difference when we get to three degrees of differential. So we're just going to leave this at, I had raised the temperature, was it 60? And then I went, too, I went too high and slowed down the compressor. So now the compressor with now more than three degrees of differential, it's running at full speed. So full speed, I'm drawing 37 amps right now. We're at 77 degrees in the cabin. My time remaining right now is showing at 14.7. What I'm gonna do now is while this is going through its process, we are going to connect to our Victron Connect. This one has the best bar, so this is the one. So here we can see voltage, voltage of our battery bank. So I'm not gonna change the pin code, I'll let the customer decide if they want to or not. Safe charge 100%, voltage is at 13.32. I'm drying right now 37.6 
amps off that battery, drawing 500 watts. I've consumed 1.8 amp hours of the battery bank in this boat, which is uh, 500 amp hours. We have over 12 hours remaining of runtime. The starter battery, so the house battery is at now 12.8 volts. The DC DC has been entirely disconnected, uh, or the battery battery charge has been entirely disconnected. And then there's a little bit more you can view in here. As well as little graphs. It all depends on how deep you want to go into this. Um, but this is all the information you can also, you can also view from the uh, from the app. So all the information on the display can also be viewed through the app in an easier way to view. Um, but this is Bluetooth, so it's only when you're on the vessel. This is not remote viewing um, to um, to check on the on the vessel through Wi-Fi or something along those lines. It is only for localized viewing. But as we can see, based on this runtime, we're significantly more than what we're talking about. And if I come over here, and so I'll raise my set point to 75. And we can view that when that's done, I'm now decreasing my amperage. So I was at 37, I'm now at 29. Which is obviously gonna increase my time remaining. Engines are off, shore power is disconnected. So these are true numbers. Looking now, I have a degree, so I'm set for 76. In the cabin, we're at 77. It's showing me on this display that I have 19 hours left. If I look down over here, I'm drawing 25 amps. So we're getting significant, significantly, we can get significantly longer run times but this is just to show a little bit of how the system's working because it's not as simple as just the fan speeding up and slowing down. It's also the compressor that's speeding up and slowing down. So the numbers that we give when we're talking about 10 hours, you've seen here that 10 hours is a very conservative number and we still have um, capabilities of having much longer run times. Plus that's not taking into consideration engines running, that's not taking a lot of other factors into consideration. So we're gonna go and we're gonna set this I'm looking, I would say 74 degrees sounds like a, about a reasonable, a reasonable temperature. I'm going to leave this vessel running. I uh, hope this answers any questions. And uh, for a few of you, our other videos or visit our website at uh, maybrewpowersystems.com.